What is up, fellow YouTubers? Before I get this awesome video started, I want to give you a channel to check out. I'm going to give a shout out to my buddy Cool Taste. He's going through a rough patch in his life, and more subscribers would definitely help. I'll put his channel on the link below. I want to give you some dating advice. A lot of guys do not like getting friend zoned. It's the culture around getting friend zoned that's the problem. When a guy gets friend zoned, it's seen as humiliation, demasculation, etc., etc. It should be seen as the exact opposite. If you're a guy and you haven't had any sort of female companionship in a while, you'll grow to appreciate just simply hanging out with a chick and talking with her because it's better than nothing. So if you want that magical key to making yourself seem more approachable to women, get yourself some female friends. And I guarantee you, if you go to the bar with your group of friends, couple of your guy friends, a couple of your female friends, and other women in the bar are going to see you laughing and having a good time with your female friends, it's going to make you seem more approachable. And if you see a chick in the bar that you like, your female friends can help you get laid. You feel me? And it works the same way for dudes trying to help their female friends. You feel me? If you got a female friend that's super hot on some dude, talk to that dude and be like, yo, this is chick that really likes you. You know. The second thing I'm going to say, men, stop thinking with your dicks. When it comes to sex, wrong attitude. No. Be a bit more compassionate, huh? Men are going to feel self-conscious about their dick size. Boo-hoo. Women have to feel self-conscious about their ass size, their breast size, their waist size. So, you know, if you don't want to compare sob stories. So women understand this, men understand this, then that helps men and women understand each other a bit better. Which is, that's the thing of it, YouTube, is you see men and women complaining about each other all the fucking time. And if both sides are complaining about each other, then nobody's doing anything for a solution. They're just pointing fingers. You're the one sticking something inside of her. You know, you're not the one having something shoved inside of you. If you're not the one having something shoved inside of you, then you have no idea what it's like to be in, in her shoes. You know. And the biggest advice I can give you is if you manage to nail the person of your dreams for a boyfriend or girlfriend, ladies and gentlemen, pay attention. Don't rush into having sex unless both of you are super comfortable with it. And if you're a dude, let her make that choice. I don't care. If you're a dude, let her make that choice. If she's comfortable with you enough to go that far, then you make, let her make that choice. You can't make that because you're not the one having something shoved inside of you. And if you want to say that's not fair, would you let someone fuck you in the ass? If the answer is no, there's your answer. That's why that double standard exists. See, some double standards are fair because you gotta put yourself in the opposite sex's perspective for a second. And some of them are completely unfair. Now the whole point of these advice videos, the whole fucking point of these advice videos like this with these particular topics 
is to help men and women understand each other a bit better. So that instead of complaining about one another, they're like, hey, you know what? We kind of go through the same shit. That these kind of videos are going to help men and women see each other as equals. Now, just because women have a lot more to feel insecure about than men as far as their body shape goes, doesn't mean that men have it easier. You know, collectively speaking, both genders deal with the same issues. It's just in different forms. You know, that being said, men are not allowed to show any emotion. If they show any emotion, they're viewed as weak. But if women show emotion, it's expected. Some women even see it as demasculating, as emotional labor. Which you gotta think, ladies, if you're like that, the thing you have to realize is you're not being fair to your other half. You can't just dump all your problems on them, bitch about the crap day you've had, and then expect them not to bitch about their day. That's how it goes. That's part of being in a relationship. And the best part about it is if you truly love each other, then you'll go to open up about your shitty day to your other half, and then you'll be there to support each other. Because at the end of the fucking day, after all the crap you went through, the best part about it is coming home to them. That's how relationships should be. I'm just saying, YouTube, that's the fucking God's honest truth. You know, and you'll know you'll found the one when the best part about your day is coming home to them, or the best part about your day is getting to hang out with them or see them. And it's not even about having sex. It's just getting to see them and, you know, be in their presence, you know. Because physical attraction goes beyond sex and what your body looks like and what people are into. That's human nature. You can't hate each other for that. It's completely unfair for women to have standards and then call men pigs for having standards. It's hypocritical as fuck. If a women only date men because they have muscles, nobody says shit about it. But if a dude dates a chick because of a certain body part, being big or small or whatever, he's seen as a pig. And I'm like, that's kind of unfair. Everybody has standards. There's nothing wrong with that. My standards are pretty low at this point, I'm not going to lie, but I still have some standards. She has to be of age, she has to be clean, and she has to be attractive. If that makes me an asshole, well then sue me. And the fourth thing, we have to have great chemistry. Like, be able to talk to one another without it being like, oh, this is awkward, you know. When you find a chick that you can talk to that's easy to talk to and easy on the eyes and if her beauty on the outside is just a bonus, you've hit the lottery, my friend. So my advice to you would be to find members of the opposite sex that share similar interests. Now, and as an example of this, if I'm goth, then naturally speaking, pursuing or looking for a goth girlfriend. You feel me? The biggest mistake couples make is they rush into sex when they're not ready. You know, take time to know the person before you rush into that. I'm just saying, YouTube. That usually ends up burning the relationship out quicker than making it better. Unless the two of you are so physically attracted to each other that it just it happens and there's nothing you can do about it. Those rare cases do happen. The thing you have to realize is that sex and money are not the most important things in a relationship. The most important things in a relationship are trust, communication, and respect. And then attraction. 
if you can't trust or communicate each other, if you can't respect each other, then it's not going to be a healthy relationship. I've made several points on my channel on why men need to be a bit more courteous with the goddamn toilet seats. I know it's the oldest argument in the book that women have with men. You fucking asshole. You could have closed the goddamn toilet seat. Would it kill you to look next time? And you're both griping at each other over something that's so fucking stupid. It literally takes you four seconds to lift the lid and another four seconds to close it. The thing of it is, peeing standing up's a privilege, the way I see it. Being able to whip out your dick and pee standing up is a privilege. Women have to squat or sit down when they pee. That being said, if women and men are out camping, who do you think's gonna have a harder time peeing out in the wild? Men or women? Dudes can just go behind a tree, fucking whip it out, take a piss, and be done with it. Women have to fucking squat or find a nasty-ass outhouse to pee in. And most women are like, yeah, no, the outhouses are kind of gross. The bacteria is, you know, uh, grody. Sometimes they're not kept up the cleanest. So most women would rather fucking squat if they have to. But if they happen to squat over some poison ivy or some poison oak, they get done taking a piss. All of a sudden, they start scratching their crotch, thinking about the last asshole they slept with, and then come to find out it's just a mild poison ivy slash and or poison oak rash. So then they ask their their uh, peeps, hey, do you guys bring any of that poison ivy, poison oak cream? Um, shit, that's the one thing we forgot to pack. Son of a... Oh. But here's the best part of it. They make these um, prosthetic penises that women can use to help them pee standing up so they don't have to fucking squat. It looks like a penis from the outside, but on the inside it's hollow. So all you gotta do is literally they cover their vajayjay when they go to take a piss and it all just streams out. So you don't have to squat or go in that nasty ass outhouse. That shows you that society is thinking about women, even if they think we're not. But, um, yeah, this advice video is long enough. Thanks for watching. I'll catch you cool cobras later.